All right, time for your Friday forecast. Nebraska trying to bounce back after that loss at Oregon. They get Northern Illinois here at Memorial Stadium. Sean, the Huskers are two-touchdown favorite. What do you think the mindset is coming out of that Oregon game? Yeah, it's just such an empty feeling because – how bad Nebraska played in the first half, yet how they were able to get back and almost win the game in the second half. And uh, there's some key injuries that happened. Uh, Joshua Kalu um, and obviously Trey Bryant with his knee uh, that make this game more interesting. But I, I think the, really the bigger story now is how can Nebraska respond? How can they step forward? And will they finally put together four quality quarters of football? We haven't seen them do that yet this season. Remarkable that Nebraska had a chance to win. They were 2 of 14 on third downs, turned the ball over four times and yet had a chance to tie that game. But I think those third downs really came back to bite them. Yeah, two for 14 on third down last week. You know, in Oregon, to their credit, they, they had Nebraska, I think, well defended in a lot of those situations. Uh, but, you know, Tanner Lee, I, I, the biggest thing to me is you got to give Tanner Lee the balance on offense. You can't expect him to drop back every single time um, and throw, 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 throw. He needs that running game to complement him, and I feel like that's when he's looked his best when that element of balance has been in this offense. But when you go third and long and have to go for fourth for four downs, that is just not a winning, consistent formula. Well, part of that balance is the run game, and obviously that was a big talk here in Lincoln on Monday because much of this uh, talk was centered around Trey Bryant's health, and that's a question mark this yeah, week. Yeah, and we've talked about that all the last two weeks, this knee injury of Trey Bryant, and Mike Riley joked that his knees are older than his body. You know, mm-hmm. He's got old knees already for a young player, and, and that's something that you know really they're going to have to battle, and it raises a lot of questions. Jalen Bradley's red shirt is going to be burned this week. Uh, I think that throws a lot of intrigue because if you're going to give Jalen Bradley carries a game like this, a game against Rutgers, those would be opportunities to do it. And then Mikael Wilbon will maybe step in that number one role, and, and then Divino Zigbo. The, I mean, he's the backup quarterback of this situation. Everybody continues to wonder where Divino's Zigbo is and will we see him this might be the week we see him it's hard to say though because we haven't seen him on the field yet this season defensively the Huskers ranked 128th in the country in total defense obviously everybody's going to look at that second half as a nice turnaround but what was your big takeaway because it was such a two different storylines in Oregon. Well, I, I hope they've got the bubble screen figured out now because mm-hmm. they've seen and more. they'll see more of it. They've seen, I mean, they've seen so many of uh, the, the quick hitting screens to the flats where, you know, you've been repped that many times now in game situations. Hopefully the players have learned and adjusted. Oregon didn't really have to do it much in the second half. They did a little bit uh, with only five passes completed, but uh, I, I think that's where it starts. The People have gone after Nebraska on the perimeters, and I'll give Oregon credit. They made a lot of great catches last week in situations where Nebraska was in place to cover. Uh, Oregon just came down with it in those 50-50 situations, uh, but it's a mentality. It's an edge. It starts with a pass rush. you got to create turnovers, and, and this is a week where it has to start. An 11 a.m. game, you know, the stadium's going to be kind of half a, half asleep. You've got to give them a reason to get in this game early, and I think it, uh, the defense has to come out here and set that tone early on. Northern Illinois is the opponent. They come in 1-1. One and one. They lost to Boston College in week one. They beat up on Eastern Illinois 38-10 last week, um, but this game really kind of reeks that this is more about Nebraska than it is who they're playing, right? Yeah, and the spread is only two touchdowns. Uh, at least that's what it opened, and that surprises me a little bit because I don't think Northern Illinois, from what I've read and seen, is that good of a team. Um, so, yeah, you're right. This is more about Nebraska to me coming out here, putting together a clean game on offense, staying healthy, and then get this defense figured out. Uh, we've heard, We've seen it in practice. They've looked good. They played two quality quarters last week. Can they do it this week for four? Will they get off to that slow start we've seen them get off to in their first two games? I mean, that, that really has to get figured out because, um, y- you know, the situation that they were in last week at Oregon uh, was just not ideal. And, and you're, you're just not going to win very many games when you give up 42 and 400 in the first half. Well, Nebraska's never lost to a MAC team. They're 5-0 and a lifetime against teams from that conference. We'll see if that streak continues Saturday at 11 a.m.